Good morning. I'm Dave, and I'm the interim pastor here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. Most of you watching this on our Facebook page know that. If you've just wandered onto our Facebook page, we'd be delighted for you to worship with us some Sunday when we're worshiping. This Sunday's a different kind of experience for all of us. If you're the least bit skeptical about coming to church or going out in a crowd, my advice to you is to please feel free to stay home. We don't want you worrying. We don't want your children worrying. And so we want all of us at this time to err on the side of caution. Now, we will be having something here at 930 on this coming Sunday morning. We're not sure what that's going to look like. We're not sure if there'll be enough of us to have a full service. One thing's for sure, we'll have a little reading. I'll do a little meditation, and if it be your will, we'll have communion. But again, if you feel the least bit worried about coming out in public, please stay home. No hard feelings. This is a great age, though, because we get to talk to each other via this medium. There's also ways that we can have even small group sessions, and we'll be exploring that and setting that up on our computers and helping you to do that and giving you a link that you can sign in through if that be your will. And that may be the way it is for a while. These are difficult times. They really are. None of us have ever been through anything like this. The only thing we can think back of is perhaps September 11. But that was kind of like a one-shot blow to the heart, and then somehow we were able to regroup. This is different. We don't know from day to day, from minute to minute, what's going to happen to us. We don't know whether things are going to get better or worse. We don't have a timeline for when things are going to get better. We are just in the midst of not knowing. It's funny, though. In those moments, how Scripture speaks. You who are members know, you who have just wandered onto this page and are wondering what this guy is doing sitting in the middle of an empty church, know that Lutherans and Presbyterians and United Methodists and our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters and the Episcopalians all preach from the common lectionary. We use it every Sunday. We read from it. And this week it's particularly interesting because the psalm appointed for this Sunday, appointed years ago by some unknown commission of biblical scholars who one of my pastor friends believed met at Hogwarts when they came up with this, picked for this Sunday, the 23rd Psalm. It's probably the most familiar psalm in all of scripture. Whenever I do a funeral for an unchurched family, no matter how unchurched they claim they are, when I look out in the congregation, there are people who, who can say the psalm right along with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Perhaps you were saying that psalm along with me. It would be an important psalm to 
keep in your quiver of good feelings in the days to come because what it says quite simply is that now when we are going through this valley, when we are worried beyond measure of what will become of our country, our economy, those people who work so hard but somehow in the midst of all this had their places of business closed, might lose them. We worry about the health of relatives. We worry about all kinds of things. It's like being in the valley of the shadow of death. But the psalmist has a word. I will fear no evil. That's an important word for this time because God isn't going to leave us in this valley. Whether it be a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, we'll be out of it and we'll look back at these times and see what a, a difference it made in our lives. Maybe it'll make us more appreciative of the, of the beauty that's out there. I have a, a friend who on his Instagram account is, he's got a real eye for, for taking pictures. And though I doubt he'd think of it as his ministry, he's ministering to all of us by just going out in his neighborhood, a very, very mundane neighborhood on the north side of Chicago and finding beauty and then going home and posting pictures that he's found on his Instagram. It's quite a lovely gift he's given to us and I don't even know if he's giving it. That's what we'll look for, is the beauty as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death until that day when things will be back to normal and we'll be there looking at that table again that God has spread before us. These are tough and difficult times, but we will get through them, my friends. And that is the promise of Scripture. And it's the promise of the 23rd Psalm. I've been thinking about the words that Anne Frank wrote when she and her entire family weren't asked to shelter in place for just a day or so, but for months and even years in fear of the Nazis and losing her life. Here's what Anne Frank wrote in The Diary of a Young Girl. She said, I don't think about all the misery, but about the beauty that still remains. This is where Mother and I differ greatly. Her advice in the face of melancholia is, think about all the suffering in the world and be thankful you're not part of it. I don't think Mother's advice can be right, little Anne wrote, because what you're supposed to do if you become part of the suffering, you'd be completely lost. On the contrary, beauty remains, even in misfortune. You, you just look for it. You discover more and more happiness and regain your balance. A person who's happy will make others happy. A person who has courage and faith will never die in misery. God will not leave us in the valley of the shadow of death, but will bring us through. Let me close with this beautiful, beautiful moment from a, a series on television that I just discovered. As usual, I'm years behind in my television watching, but in the Christmas edition of Call the Midwife, they were all celebrating. And the narrator wrote this. 
the seasons will always turn. The clouds will gather and the cold will come. We will survive them. We will grow regardless of the weather. We will know wonder where there has been despair. There will be happiness. And we will remember. There will be friendships that we won't forget. Love is the constant whereby we endure all winters and all storms. Pray with me. God of insight, as Jesus traveled through towns and villages, caring for the sick and those who ministered to them, Come to our aid now, that we may experience your healing love. Heal us from our fear, which prevents neighbors from helping one another. Be with those who carry out everyday duties, not only the policemen and the firemen, the EMTs, but the garbage collectors and the mail carriers people who work in grocery stores and the people who stock them. The unnamed numbers who on any given day make this nation work. Be with them. And stay with us as we endure and carry on, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to the good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all of God's people. Love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always.